Captain Schlenel held on to the grips of her chair as she felt another one of her ordnance launch out. It was sent to intercept ordnance that was already coming into her ship. She watched on in horror as she could see through all the sensors that another one of the ships in the convoy had been struck. It wasn't yet destroyed, yet it was simply out of control and drifting. She thought for a moment that perhaps the attackers would let them live, take them as prisoners, and maybe hold them for a while, and maybe auction them off as slaves if they were unlucky, or perhaps simply held for ransom so that their respective species would then have to pay through the nose for going into this space. She didn't have a chance to even consider it as another shot was fired, this time from a strange kinetic weapon that began to travel faster and faster through her sensors. She wondered what was going on. Why would they fire on a disabled ship? And she again watched in horror as the view screen saw the ship get perforated and then exploded. Her carapace began to change colors again. Her fear was being evident, though she held herself as professional as possible on the bridge. She commanded the helm to continue evasive maneuvers, was able to get a hold of the weapons officer and make sure she still had weapons to fire, yet she was running out. Her energy weapons couldn't reach out far enough, and it seemed as though some of the projectiles being used just seemed to be impervious to energy weapons as it was. She didn't have capital ship weapons on this freighter, after all. I mean, it was a freighter. She was simply part of a convoy. What the hell was going on? She looked over to her XO. XO Quan was still trying to be professional, but he was so scared that he was clearly molting as there was a small pile of feathers underneath him. He looked over and continued to bark out any type of order that needed to be said. However, the crew was now an automatic as they continued to duck and weave through the debris fields and pray that perhaps, maybe, maybe they would be saved. They thought back to what happened. They decided that they would bring their cargo through a territory that was known to be dangerous. But as long as they held this course, as long as they went through this one line, this one area where the species that owned the territory would allow them to go, they would be safe. They were allowed free passage as long as they did not deviate from this area. The convoy's route would force them to decelerate, taking them out of FTL travel, as there were still remnants from the human war. As they had slowed down for this particular area, they could see a massive space station that had been torn apart by several galaxy-class weapons. Weapons so powerful that it made the captain shudder just a little bit, shading her carapace from a strong green to a small type of pink along the edges. She shook it off as she did not want the crew to see that she was being nervous at the idea of such weapons being used in this area. Any one of those weapons would take the whole convoy apart in one single swipe. She knew how dangerous the species was that was close, and she did not want to deal with them. She continued to go forward with the convoy, being the fourth ship in line. They stayed almost perfectly lined up. She had heard an old phrase, ducks in a row, from an old human friend that was sadly no longer around anymore. She looked and had a little bit of sadness as she realized that the humans that had fought on the station had put up a hell of a fight, as there were still wreckages of ships floating in the ether of space, drifting, and this is why they had to slow down. The convoy's route through this sector just allowed them to go through. Safe travel, safe passage, they said. But... It was required that they slow down so not to crash into one of these drifting ships or the station itself. If they got too close during FTL speed, it would simply rip the ship sideways at such a speed that it would be lethal for the crew as they smash themselves into the bulkheads. And of course, that's not something you want to do. It is always best to get to your destination with your ship and crew intact. This is why it was such a shock that from the moment they caught another group of ships on the sensors and realized that they were not in the convoy lane, they were simply fired upon. 
many lines of ordinance came out and before any of the answers were given why they were being fired upon the first ship had to take a base of action and was grazed by one of these pieces of ordnance. But the ordnance itself changed direction, and the second one did not miss, striking into the side of the cargo ship, causing a massive explosion on the inside, causing most of the cargo to spill out, but the ship was still functional. At that point, everyone in the convoy went to general quarters and started screaming for everyone to get ready. Arm the guns, arm the turrets, the missile launchers, get everything ready to fire. This was not a military convoy, but they did not go anywhere undefended. Who would in the vastness of space, because you never know what type of dangers you may face. Even though most of their weapons were designed specifically to take down asteroids, comets, the strange meteor that might come flying, or simply some space debris that they needed to shoot before they got to where they were, it was enough to defend themselves, at least they hoped. With that, the convoy broke formation immediately and began to use the debris field to protect itself, trying to get itself between the incoming ordnance and the station, using the station as a shield. The station itself was very sturdy, though it had been abandoned for a very long time. It was crashed into by the ordnance. Other ships used the space debris of far forgotten destroyed ships to simply block the ordnance itself using anything they could to keep from being struck and once they ran out of anything to hide behind as the ordnance striking them as the enemy ships began to close distance they tried anything to dodge and then eventually had to return fire sending out a type of interceptor it flew through the ether of space and they would watch for several minutes as each of these projectiles would come in the battle, even though it had only taken down one ship, had lasted almost an hour. At these distances, it took several minutes, five, sometimes ten minutes before a single round of ordnance would strike. But when it did, it struck with unbelievable precision and incredible veracity. The explosive force that came out caused one of the disabled ships to rocket into the one that was hiding behind it and then get crushed along the side. Captain Schlonel looked on again with horror as that ship had a friend of hers completely and utterly destroyed. Over 60% of the ship had been crushed by the incoming hunk of metal that slammed into them at a speed she didn't even think was possible from simple ordnance. But no, that was not enough. Others as the enemies became closer and closer, saw that they were using a type of dummy kinetic weapon, and it fired through and would actually pierce through anything they were hiding behind, anything at all, and would simply pierce them from one side to the other. The only thing they could use the debris for was a type of concealment. But now, as they were using more and more dummy ordnance, they would have to dodge more and more, but because of that, they couldn't hide behind from any of the guided ordnance, and because of that, they had to use their interceptors. Two, three more ships would go down in the next 30 minutes. Now, the captain was scared. She kept screaming to the XO to get some sort of distress call out, even though she knew, being in this dangerous sector of space, there was a chance that no one would answer. The local population didn't care for anyone else but themselves. It was always dangerous to come through there, but for the past several decades, not a single incident had ever happened, at least that she had heard about. And here we, they were, in the middle of a firefight with some sort of ships she had never seen before, but she assumed she knew what they were. She began to screech to each of the stations to do something, get a hold of anyone to send out a signal. And before she realized it, the XO came back after being called over by the comms officer and then screamed back, Ma'am, we're being jammed. We can't get a signal through. The captain simply turned and said, Find a way. And with that, they continued to dodge, trying to hold themselves into whatever they could hold onto as the ship moved, banked, twisted, turned, and jumped up, down, left, right, and center. It spun in sometimes directions, trying to flip and burn, trying to get away from whatever ordnance was coming in. She saw another ship get hit. This one tumbled and tumbled 
until it smashed into the space station itself. This gave her an idea. Can you use that? She said, waving her claw towards the station itself. That is when the XO looked and his feathers for the first time poked up on top of his head, a sign of surprise and hope. Yes, ma'am, is all she got back. And with that, not only did the comms officer get to work, but several others went to work. They immediately boarded a ship and launched it towards the station itself. Maybe there was something in there they could use, some sort of distress beacon they could send, something to help them because they were being torn apart. It was only going to be another hour, maybe, before they were going to be in range of the short-range weapons of these vessels coming in. And as they were closing in, they finally got a good scan of what was coming. These were not cargo vessels. These were not pirate ships. These were purpose-built killers. These were nothing but engines and guns. All of them pointed forward, seemingly waiting to fire each cannon one at a time as to not spike the heat too much, as any time you spike the heat you risk the reactor overloading or shutting down due to safety measures, and you definitely don't want to be drifting as you're inside any type of battlefield. With that, the captain watched as his shuttle went full burn straight towards the station. They had gotten close enough that it only took about 20 seconds before they were inside one of the hangar bays. And she looked up towards the darkness of space as she saw more ordnance begin to come in. And she prayed for the great maker to save them all. 41 minutes later, the captain looked around and it was the last two ships of her convoy were still alive. Hers and a small little Corvette class that just happened to be small and fast enough that it could avoid most of the fire. But she could tell that they were burning through their fuel way too fast. They couldn't keep this up forever. In fact, if it wasn't for the fact that they were being jammed, they would have made a run for the edge of the debris field to try and get into FTL, but that would leave them extremely exposed so she only could hope. At that point, she heard the XO, We have sent a distress call. We have actually been able to send a distress call. Oh, thank the great maker for this. We sent it. The captain, though hopeful, realized how desperate this was and how almost fruitless it was. It was more to give the crew a sense of hope a hope that they could actually survive this as they were barely able to scratch even one of the enemy vessels. In fact, only one of the interceptors had actually lost its target lock on the ordnance that was coming in and reacquired one of the enemy ships. It did get close, but not close enough. When it exploded, it was close enough to the enemy's hull that you could visibly see the crew and the ship itself shake. She wondered, if they didn't have any type of dampening field, if this would be enough to stop their crew from firing. But as the ship eventually corrected itself, she realized that, no, their crew was still alive. She looked, and the four ships that were coming in were now almost within optimum range. They won't miss at this range. She continued to try and move her ship in a way that she could keep at least the station between them because the station seemed to be the only thing hard enough to stop the dummy projectiles from coming in and she again prayed her helmsman was doing everything he could to try and get everything lined up in between them and the incoming ordnance. The dance in space was that of sheer majesty and skill and she could not help but be grateful for this young one's unbelievable abilities. She would have to hire him on time permanently, as he was only supposed to be there for the one mission, the one run, the one contract. But no, this one was staying. Ma'am, we have incoming contacts. She heard this just as the alarm bell started to go off, signifying that the enemy was in optimum firing range. The captain lowered her head. XO... Please tell me someone's here to help. Unknown, ma'am. They're coming from the opposite direction. They're, they're coming from the void. 
void space was what it was known as the area that you do not trespass in. This was coming from the local population. Captain Schlinell closed her eyes and believed that she was totally dead now. At that point, one ship jumped in from FTL, a very large ship, twice the size of the enemy ships themselves, and surprisingly clean and well manicured. Normally, what she saw before was just a clunky piece of machinery that was trying to shoot at her. Something, again, that was nothing but basically a rocket with guns strapped to it. But no, this was a purpose-built ship. Ma'am, we're being hailed. Put it on. As the holographic screen jumped up, the captain's eyes and everyone else on the bridge got extremely wide as suddenly... Her carapace went completely pale, and the Exo dropped another thirty feathers as they looked into the face of the one species that scared them the most. The locals had actually come in, and now, now she was looking into their eyes. Greetings, this is Captain Kerpensky of the ship Old School Cavalry. We have received your distress call. Are you still in need of assistance? Over. I, uh... Uh, uh, was all that the captain could spit out. The XO himself had actually wet himself at the idea that a human had shown up, the most dangerous creature in the galaxy. Wah, <laughs> was all that could get out. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Can you adjust your translator, please? Yes, Captain, we are in need... Of assistance, the captain was finally able to blurt out. Our convoy has been under attack. We have, we, they just came out of nowhere, started firing. They won't even talk to us. Uh, one moment. It seemed as though the captain was looking into something off the screen. Oh, shit, not this again. Just one moment, let me patch in, let me see what I can do. The ship itself just simply floated past Captain Shenlal and her crew. They looked on in amazement as the ship seemed to glide through space. It was amazing to see this marvel of technology. They didn't have any type of thrusters, not like anything they had seen before. How was this thing able to move like that? There was no type of nacelle or anything like that. How, what the, what in the ever-loving snot? But they didn't have time to worry about this. This is Captain Kurpensky to oncoming group. Please identify yourself. I say again, identify yourself. There was silence. Nothing but silence. This is going to be your only warning. This is Captain Kurpensky from the ship Old School Cavalry. You will respond and you will cease fire as these last two ships are under my protection. Respond. Over. He only received the following message. You will not have Xenos in our space ever again. They have made it impure. They will now die because blood for the blood card and all Xenos must die. With that, Captain Kurpensky oh shit. Well, you heard him. Light his ass up. And with that, Captain Schlinell and the XO looked on with complete amazement as the ship itself seemed to transform. Different bays opened on all sides, ventral, dorsal, port, starboard, all over the ship. If fighters didn't fly out, weapon emplacements extended and then turned themselves forward all of them on the slant of the ship so that every single one of the weapons could fire at the same time. All right, you death-worshipping assholes. You want to see God so bad? Here's your ticket to ride, bitch. And with that, every single weapon opened up on the four ships. 
All of them suddenly took evasive actions the same way that the convoy had, but this time they didn't have anything to hide behind. They began to fire all sorts of decoys, all sorts of interceptors, but they could not block the amount of dumb fire that was coming their direction. One of the ships was immediately hit three, four, five times and then simply broke into pieces. It was adrift in space with the engine compartments sparking off in the distance. With that, the other three ships must have said fuck it because they simply turned and began to fire their weapons. The large ship, the old school cavalry, fired its own decoys and interceptors in response and the night sky filled up with the trails of all sorts of ordnance that was being fired across, some using simple propellant, other ones being used by some sort of magnetic weapon system, but all of them firing, even some energy weapons seemed to cleave through the sky itself which was surprising considering most energy weapons didn't have the greatest of ranges. With that, Captain Schlenau watched as another one of the ships was again torn asunder and the other two continuing to fire, but now they were on full burn, seemingly not to care about anything. They were far enough out that they could simply jump away, but it must have been some reason that they were absolutely crazy enough to drive their ship towards Captain Kerpensky's larger ship as it continued to fire like crazy. All of the ordnance, it seemed like every single tube was firing at the same time. Every single turret was firing as each ship continued to advance, moving just slightly from one side to the other but keeping their weapons forward. And another of the approaching ships was torn asunder. And then the final one was getting close. This is when the XO screamed out, it's spinning up, it's spinning up, it's going into FTL. With that, Captain Chanel looked at the direction. It was aiming right at Captain Kerpensky's larger ship. Are they planning on ramming it? Are they insane? And then realized the idiocy of that same phrase as almost the entire bridge crew turned to look at her, realizing she's talking about humans, after all. With that... Captain Kerpensky must have seen what was going on as all his weapons seemed to focus and fire in unison, so much so that the recoil itself of all the mass launching in one direction was able to push his ship backwards, even though it was trying to move forwards. It was an absolutely horrifying sight as the final ship's engines spun up and the massive glow from the rear end as they were about ready to launch an FTL and just as they did the ordnance slammed into them and FTL speed debris came flying towards Kerpensky's ship. However, the slanted armor made it easy for it to deflect all sorts of debris. Captain Schlenel screamed for the helmsman to find some sort of cover, anything, as they ducked behind the space station, and as they did, their shuttle was just now leaving, coming back to them. They knew they could hide behind and hold it as they waited. The final corvette that was out there had found another place to hide as well, almost exactly where they were. The ships were so close that through the portholes they could actually see each other in the eye, but this seemed to be the only place that they could hide, that they wouldn't be torn asunder by flying debris. But they took a massive breath as they saw the debris field go flying past them, most of it crashing into the space station, causing even more damage to it. And yet, they could still see that the old school cavalry was still there. They hailed over to the side. They could see the look, the same look on their face, a nonchalant look from the captain. As Captain Chanel asked, uh, Captain Kerpensky, are, are you in need of assistance as well? From that? Nah. That was nothing. Don't worry about it. Although, uh, I will say coming to save your ass ain't exactly cheap, so... You premium salvage rates, she blurted out. Deal, he said. And with that, dozens of automated shuttles left his ship and began to reach out across. It began to scan the ships that had been destroyed and then immediately started grabbing a few and bringing the entire ship inside. What are you, why are you taking the entire ship? There's survivors on board. We're not so much assholes as to kill everybody. But 
the the other humans they, they wanted us to do why it, i i don't understand please tell us oh simple they're um for lack of a better term they're old school zealots they don't understand that you can't fight technology you have to kind of work with it but wasn't that the reason for the earth war the, the reason why all this debris is here anyway yeah pretty much but you didn't win i i don't understand how are they both still active um what do you mean both but two sides were fighting no oh, i see your confusion you have to understand that we humans are tribalistic, but we are not just split down the middle. There's several different clans, and usually we're broken up by planets. Or, in my case, this ship is my home. I'm just a cargo ship. You, you're just a cargo ship with, with all that weapons? Yes, how can that be weapon systems? The XOs. The weapon... And... And armor, weapons and armor, why so much? Well, you never know what you're going to see out here, the captain exclaimed. They were all on the bridge, just completely flabbergasted at this. As they looked over, they could see the corvette that had taken some damage being addressed by two of the automated drones that had been sent out by the old school cavalry ship. And then they simply reached out with their claws attached on, and seemed to be patching up the hull. They were amazed at this, and in complete stunned silence, they watched as another one of them came up to their ship and seemingly patched up a small tear in the outer hull. It was a glazing shot that just barely caught them, but it, it was enough to crack open the outer hull without ripping the inner hull. So they still were pressurized, but they didn't realize that they had a massive gap in the side of their ship. Had they gone to FTL speed and tried to enter any type of atmosphere with that later on, they would have been torn to pieces. They realized that this human, along with whatever is here, was helping just because. They watched not only their ships being patched up, but the drones going to any type of cargo from the ships that were destroyed and stripping the cargo and bringing it inside. The drones also began to scan the other ships, the other human ships, and began to take parts off of them and bring them inside the larger vessel. They were just amazed at this. Just absolutely amazed at the efficiency of the drones themselves. Every once in a while, they would see a manned vehicle as well, coming across to see what was going on. It seemed as though it was simply looking through its very large porthole, holding a tablet in its hand and typing into it. And with that, another drone would go over to do whatever it was told to do. The crew watched this dance for over an hour. Before long, the drones began to return to the large vessel. They had already patched up any problems that were on the side of the old school cavalry and had gone back inside. So, uh... Do you need an escort? Um, uh, uh, Captain Schlenal was again lost for words. The XO simply had to reach out with his talons and tap her on the shoulder before she came out of it. Uh, yes, Captain Karpensky, if you would be so kind as to allow us free passage. You were supposed to be allowed free passage before, but yeah, I'll get you there. How fast can you go? Uh, three times FTL. R that, that's kind of slow. Slow? She thought to herself as she was one of the fastest cargo ships in the known universe. This particular model was able to traverse the unknown regions faster than anybody else. And yet, the human was calling it slow? She thought about that. She was absolutely mortified at this implication the more she thought about it. But then simply sent the message to Captain Karpensky. Please escort us, if you could, because we do not know if this space lane that you call the Northwest Passage is safe anymore. 
Agreed. So, tell you what, you lead the way, I'll just keep pace with you. Anybody catches wind of my ship, I guarantee they're not going to come at you. Not unless one of the warbirds decides to come in, then we're all in trouble. With that, the XO, Quan, lost another few feathers as they thought about the implication of that. If the cargo vessels were this dangerous, what the hell would the warbirds actually be bringing? They thought at first that what they were attacked by were actual warships, but no, those were simple patrol craft and nothing else. They did not bring the big guns. And with that, they continued on, finally getting free of the debris field, jumping to FTL, and were able to make it to the other side of Terran space. And as they entered regular space, they slowed down just enough so they could send out a message. Thank you, Captain, for allowing us safe passage through. Uh, perhaps we will call on your services again if uh, the price is not too high, of course. Of course, Captain Kropensky said. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am actually running late to deliver my goods. And uh, good luck to you all. With that, the ship itself did a flip and burn so unbelievably quick that everyone thought that a ship that size would rip itself apart and then it just simply jumped into FTL faster than anything. No flash of light beforehand, no build up of any type of energy. It was just gone. How the shit did he do that, was all the helmsman had to say. And after that, it was fairly normal to get a hold of any somewhat friendly human ships and ask for a escort through human space, as the local humans were the most dangerous. The war within themselves had torn entire planets and moon-sized space stations to pieces as they were busy killing themselves. And yet any time any type of alien tried to interfere in their war, they were immediately eradicated. Their entire fleets were simply wiped out as all the humans from either side of the conflict would simply turn their weapons and begin to fire. And as soon as all the escape pods were launched and all the alien ships were shot up, they would simply go back to killing each other. Humans were extremely dangerous. And it became true that you needed one to escort you because the best defense against the humans was another human.